Hi everyone, today we are looking at chemical monitoring and management and in this topic we will look at the Haber process and the Lecher-Less principle. We already know that the Haber process is the reaction of nitrogen and hydrogen to form ammonia and this is an equilibrium reaction and we also know that Lecher-Less principle determines the factors that affect the state of equilibrium. So what favors the forward reaction and what favors the backward reaction. So in this topic, we will look at how does Lecher-Less principle determine the equilibrium position of the Haber process. So the Haber process involves an equilibrium reaction as we already know. The knowledge of Lecher-Less principle is needed in order to predict reaction conditions that will impact on the production of ammonia. So we want conditions that will increase the yield of ammonia in the reaction process. And hence we will look at Lecher-Less principle and we will look at the ways in which we can increase the um, yield of ammonia. So what are the raw materials for the Haber process? The raw materials for the Haber process are nitrogen and hydrogen. So let's look at how each of these raw materials are derived from the environment. So first of all, nitrogen is extracted from air, from the distillation of uh, liquid air, and it involves methane and removal, remo removal of oxygen. So how is hydrogen got, uh, collected for the Haber process? Hydrogen is industrially produced by reacting methane with steam in the presence of a nickel catalyst at about temperature of 750 degrees Celsius. So the reaction is methane gas reacts with water vapor to form carbon monoxide and hydrogen. And also you have to ensure that carbon monoxide is removed before feeding it into the Haber process because we know that carbon monoxide can act as a poison for the catalyst and it can destroy the catalyst. Therefore, before you putting this hydrogen into the um, reaction vessel, we need to ensure that no carbon monoxide is present. So what are the equilibrium considerations for the Haber process? So the equation for the synthesis of ammonia is nitrogen plus three molecules of hydrogen forms two molecules of ammonia plus 92 kilojoules of energy. So this 92 kilojoules of energy actually tells us that it's an exothermic process. So energy is produced at the end of the reaction. And this will definitely have some effect on the equilibrium position. So let's look at some of the equi uh, equilibrium considerations. So what happens if we increase the pressure of the reaction vessel? So if the pressure on this reaction system is increased, the equilibrium moves to the right. And why is that? Because we know that there is one molecule of nitrogen reacting with three molecules of hydrogen to form two molecules of ammonia. So on the product side, we have only two molecules of gases. And on the reactant side, we have four molecules of gases. Hence, if we increase the pressure, the equilibrium moves to the right to reduce the pressure. And therefore, it moves to the side where there is least number of molecules. So, as the number of moles of reactants are four molecules and is greater than that of the products, therefore the equation will move to the right. Now, if the temperature is lowered, the equilib equilibrium will move to the right as well. And why is that? Because we know that the reaction is exothermic and heat is produced as one of the products. Therefore, if we reduce the amount of heat, the reaction will move to the side that produces more heat. Hence, if we increase the, if the temperature is lower, then the equilibrium will move to the right, which will produce more heat, and this is due to the fact that the reaction is exothermic. So let's look at how the Haber process actually works. So in step one, stoichiometric amounts of nitrogen and hydrogen are fed into the Haber process reaction system. So one molecule of nitrogen will react with two molecules of hydrogen in this reaction. In step two, which is here, a pump pressurizes the gaseous mixture. What happens in step three? In step three, the nitrogen and hydrogen under the high pressure are heated and passed over the catalytic reactor, which contains the catalyst. So it contains finely divided iron catalyst 
forming ammonia. Not all of the nitrogen and hydrogen react. So when the um, nitrogen and hydrogen are passed into the catalytic reactor, most of it reacts but again not all. But we want all of our reactants to convert properly to give us our product in high yield. Hence what can we do? We, the mixture of ammonia that is formed, nitrogen and hydrogen is depressurized and rapidly cooled. And liquid ammonia is removed. So as you can remember that the um, reaction of the production of ammonia is under is in a state of equilibrium. So if you continually remove the product, there is less amount of product and more reactants. Hence, due to equilibrium, the forward reactions are going to be favored as there is less product, so the reaction will try to produce more products. Hence, uh, liquid ammonia is constantly removed to increase the yield. Also, unreacted nitrogen and hydrogen are pressurized and fed back into the system. So we need to ensure that whatever reactants we use, all of them are converted to ammonia and nothing goes to waste. Therefore, anything that's unreacted are sent back to the system, which again goes through the whole process and forms the ammonia. This brings us to the end of the theory session. And now let's look at some of the questions to test your knowledge. So question six, which of the following thermochemical equation best represents the Haber process? So let's look at each of these equations. So equation one tells us that two molecules of nitrogen plus three molecules of hydrogen forms two molecules of ammonia. But if you can realize, this does not show that it's a reversible reaction. Because if it was the reversible reaction, then the arrow should be like this. This shows that it's a normal reaction, which means the um, only nitrogen and hydrogen react to form ammonia, but ammonia does not dissociate to form nitrogen and hydrogen, which is wrong. Because we know that this is a re equilibrium reaction and hence both the forward reaction and the backward reaction occurs. But in this, as in this equation, it only shows the forward reaction, it does not sh show the backward reaction, so this is wrong. Again in um, B, it shows that two molecules of nitrogen plus three molecules of hydrogen forms ammonia. Again, it does not show that it's an equilibrium reaction, so it's false. Also, here it's a positive sign. A positive sign means it's telling us that the reaction is endothermic, but we know that the reaction is exothermic. Hence, this is wrong as well, because firstly, it shows it's a positive sign, but it's wrong. It should be a negative sign because it's an exothermic reaction. Also, it shows that it's uh, not an equilibrium reaction. That's wrong as well because the production of ammonia is an equilibrium reaction. So let's look at option D. Option D tells us that um, um, one molecule of nitrogen reacts with three molecules of ammonia, uh, three molecules of hydrogen to form two molecules of ammonia. And it also tells us that this is a reversible reaction. So this is correct. But let's look at what the enthalpy information tells us. The enthalpy information tells us that it's positive 91.8 kilojoules per mole. And this is wrong because this again tells us it's an endothermic reaction. This tells us that the forward reaction is endothermic, but we know that the forward reaction is exothermic because heat is generated in the process. Hence, this is wrong as well. Therefore, our answer is C. And why is that? Because it correctly shows that the formation of ammonia is an equilibrium reaction and also it's an exothermic reaction. And how does that, how do we know that? Because of the negative sign. The negative sign tells us that the formation of ammonia is an exothermic reaction and it produces 91.8 kilojoules of heat in every uh, production of every two molecules of ammonia. Hence, C is the correct answer. Now let's move on to question seven. Question seven tells us ammonia is manufactured by the Haber process in which nitrogen and hydrogen react according to the equation, which is nitrogen plus three molecules of hydrogen forms two molecules of ammonia. And from the enthalpy, uh, enthalpy uh, information, we can see it's an exothermic process by the negative sign. So part A asks us what is meant by the symbol, this arrow. So what is meant by this arrow? 
So this actually means that it's a reversible reaction. So the reaction proceeds in both direction. Both the forward reaction occurs, which is ammonia reacts with hydrogen to form ammonia. Uh, sorry, nitrogen reacts with hydrogen to form ammonia, and the backward reaction occurs as well, which is ammonia dissociates. The molecule of ammonia breaks down to form nitrogen and hydrogen molecules. What does question B ask us? Question B asks us to name one compound manufactured on a large scale from ammonia. Now, fertilizer or nitric acid. Because we have seen previously that over 80% of ammonia that is manufactured, most of it is used as fertilizer. Hence, fertilizer is definitely one of the major products that are manufactured from ammonia and also nitric acid because we saw that Germany produced large scale explosives from ammonia using nitric acid. And what does question C tell us? Question C asks us why is iron used in the Haber process and what effect does it have? So if you can remember, iron was used as a catalyst to speed up the process and it speeds up the attainment of equilibrium. So it lowers the activation energy, so the reaction um, proceeds to equilibrium at a faster rate. Again, less costs are involved if the reaction occurs at a faster rate and the same amount of product is produced. Let's look at question 8. Question 8 tells us, explain why the yield of product in the Haber process is reduced at high temperature using Le Chatelet's principle. Now, what is the Le Chatelet's principle? Let's look at that. Le Chatelet said that if an e if a reaction is at equilibrium, by disrupting any states such as the temperature, pressure or concentration, the, um, the process of equilibrium is disrupted and either the forward or the backward reaction will be favored to balance the equilibrium. So let's look at the, rea um, the reaction for the Haber process. So it's an exothermic reaction, we already know that. And um, nitrogen reacts with hydrogen to give us ammonia and again it's a equilibrium reaction, it's a reversible reaction. Now according to Le Chatelet's principle, when an exothermic reaction is at equilibrium is heated. Heated means we're increasing the amount of temperature, right? And it's an exothermic reaction. So if we increase the amount of um, heat and also heat is one of our products, therefore the reaction should go backwards to reduce the amount of heat. So that's what's going to happen. So if the equilibrium mixture is heated, equilibrium moves towards the reactants because there is less heat involved on that side and this is, uh, to minimize the change. That is to reduce the temperature again. So because we're increasing the temperature, the equilibrium will try and reduce the temperature. And what happens as a result? As a result, ammonia is produced, um, less ammonia is produced and the yield is reduced. Because the equation is moving backwards, it means that ammonia breaks apart to form nitrogen and hydrogen molecules, so the amount of ammonia produced reduces. So this brings us to the end of the question session, and in this um, uh, section we looked at the Haber process in detail, what, involve, what is involved in the Haber process and what are the things we need to look at due to less and less principle because the Haber process is an equilibrium reaction.